Okay. How long is your life? An um, hour? No, I don't know. Hi. How, How are, you? are you? Good. Good. Question for you. Can I switch it or not? Can I turn it around? You can turn it around. Yep. But it doesn't. Like, I cannot turn it like that, right? Yeah, you have to keep it that way. However you have it now. Okay. So, hold on. Now with this one in a different way, so I need to put a little bit away. Okay, this is good. This is perfect. Good. Perfect. <laughs> Awesome. Oh, right, it be like this the entire conversation. That's cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Awesome. Yep. Let me. I was gonna pull up your bio. I was just gonna say like a couple little things, but this should be a good one. I know people were excited about this one. So. And do, you, do we know how many attendees do we have? Um, I've been having like uh, between seven and I think ten is what I've been having. So it's kind of a smaller group. And then I can kind of watch, and we're live right now, but that's fine. Mm -hmm. um, I can watch the comments and then just let you know, like if people have questions and stuff. Excellent. And then um, you're going to be putting the information as I'm talking about it, right? Yeah, I'll put it. I might have to put it after. Um, let me see. How could I post it? I'm wondering if you can add it like on a comment. Um, is it possible yeah. to do that? Like I see here, add a comment on my side. I don't know if you can see that. I have that too. Let me see if I go to my. Okay. You still there? Cool. I'm here. Yeah. <laughs> post there. Yay. All right. I just posted that all in the comments. So it's there. Awesome. <clears throat> good, good. That was easy. Excellent. So question, um, do you want me to log off and then reconnect or can we stay here at this time? It's totally up to you. Um, we can stay here. I think that's fine. Can you hear echoing? Um, a little bit. When you are in where you are now, no. But when you come closer, yes. What about okay. Me? Can you hear any echoing? No, I can't. Not now. Okay. Yeah. I have to get, so that I just got a new phone, but like it's not, <laughs> of course, it's a defective one. I'm like, you've got to be kidding. But, oh, yeah. <clears throat> I understand. Oh, that is exciting. Yeah. All right. So we've got a couple of people that joined. Hey guys, we're still, we're just waiting um, for the top of the hour to roll around, but thanks for joining early. And I just posted in the comments um, a couple links that you can check out while we're waiting. I think these links are probably like salary info, right? Aura and um, just info they can check out. Awesome. So I would be talking about that way they can have it <laughs> well i'm really excited too like i wish somebody had done this for me when i was job searching <clears throat> well like i had told then, you when i happy took to be here yeah when i took this job i'm in now i didn't even negotiate that time which i usually do um but i was i had already left my previous job but then i was like they like they headhunted me so clearly they wanted me <laughs> And so I totally could have negotiated, right? But I just, I chickened out and I was like, no. So, oh, well. And then happened. it depends. Like, so I'm going to be providing like a couple of uh, feedback of when, you know, like, and I hope that if there are questions that come, that's easier because I can answer also like questions that they can type in the chat. Um, yeah. And then when, 
um, it's like depending, you know, it's not only like the salary, but also like your function, like title, things like that, that can mm -hmm. pay as well as to, I want to make sure that during the conversation today, we talk about the overall uh, umbrella compensation, which it includes basically everything. So I want to make sure that uh, we provide that feedback to everybody that will be joining. Uh, that way they can get a little bit more understanding of that. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Well, and I think something that a lot of people don't know about, especially if they live in like more rural um, areas and it's not a large company, but as you move your way up the ranks, then there's like more stuff to negotiate about, right? Like you could ask for more PTO, you can ask for stocks in the company and ask to get those vested sooner, um, 401k, right? Like there's just so much additional stuff that you could negotiate about that I never knew. Like I've kind of just been feeling it out as I move my way up through the corporate ladder. But like, you know, my parents never went through that. So I never had anyone say like, hey, you could, you know, negotiate a higher salary and a higher bonus or stocks and like there's all this other stuff besides <laughs> like just the baseline. So I totally get it. <laughs> yep. So much. Sounds good. Sounds good. Mm -hmm. What are you doing after this? Um, probably nothing. Maybe getting my daughter to bed. We'll see. <laughs> yeah. What about you? Do you have kids? I don't have kids. No. But right now. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But that's exciting. Mm -hmm. this is gonna be fun and then i'm curious to see what questions like each of you have because yeah. it's more like um it helps to see like what you know like what are your top process in certain areas and if um there are those questions then i can answer or see the best of ability mm -hmm. yeah well, I think it'd be good to just share your experience from like an HR perspective too. what we had talked about that, like, you know, a lot of women don't negotiate, but men like typically do yeah. always like in, in the experience I've had managing men, like they always try to negotiate no matter what it is like bonus cycle or like, like just anything. If there's something to negotiate, like they're, they're there, they want to negotiate. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> that's funny. <laughs> and usually I'm just like, I didn't set this stuff. So it's, you know, it's corporate driven, but <clears throat> it's funny. <laughs> I do agree with you. Just keeping my cheat sheet here. You're in New Hampshire, right? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Right now in Manchester, and usually I work at the location in London, Derry, which is about like, um, uh -huh. right Five minutes from home. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Do you like it though? You've been there a while, right? Yes. I yeah. been roles within the company and then it's a lot of fun. So yeah, I will share that too. Like how like um like how I learned that like about the information like for HR and then what are the um tips like sometimes like um when Sometimes I found that there are times where people go like for an offer for a job, but they haven't done mm -hmm. the full research. So I will be talking today about that too, and mm -hmm. how and that is uh, for each candidate uh, to do that, to do that research because it can help them. And it can also help the people like me who are in the hiring processes. Yeah. So we can understand how to better serve the candidate, what is what they're really looking for. Yeah. yeah times where um, the candidate either doesn't know it or um, is unsure or uh, which direction uh, the candidate wants to go in their career, um, that will help too. Yeah, yeah absolutely. <clears throat> Let's see, what time is it? Five uh, more it, minutes. We'll I'll give it here. <laughs> No more. Yeah, we've got a few people in here.
and then this will still be so like even if people don't join live it will go into our um instagram tv igtv like library so people can still come back and look at it like at another time that's always nice this back a little more good just came may post it as you know if it's any questions that they may mm -hmm. have okay I will be encouraging during the entire time for them to yes. <laughs> information in there as it's helpful, you know. This is the sign for them, so great time yeah. to questions and get involved. Yes, definitely. Let me turn the air conditioning off. It's like so loud in my ear. Hold on. So no worries. <laughs> it's probably so weird to hear about like the air conditioning running and stuff. <laughs> In February, it was 85 down here today. We went to the beach. It was so nice. Ugh. Which area of Florida are you in? So Venice, which is like 45 minutes south of Tampa. Yeah. It's like, and it's not as um, like touristy and stuff. Well, this year, I think with COVID and stuff, everybody's just coming to Florida. <laughs> so like there's quite a few people, but it was fun. Jade, we're getting ready to do this. We need to go back in there. <laughs> oh my goodness. Poor Bailey. Would you like to see my outfit? No. Okay. All right, Jade, go in there. We're going to get started here in a couple minutes. She's gonna be doing pretty soon this. Oh <laughs> my goodness. Right? Yeah. Okay, go in the other room, please. Thank you. I need something to do. Okay. Then I won. Okay. Can you go to your one? Jade, please stop. No. Go in. The Awesome. All right, I think it's close enough to seven. Um, I'll actually start by introducing myself because I think there are a couple people in here that I don't know. Um, so for those of you that don't know me, I am Jill Zambon. I'm the owner of Brave Original Design. So it's a new fashion line for women. Um, professional attire really focused on sustainability and organic clothing designed to really move with your body. And I think you'll love the fabrics and the feel and the fit, especially. Um, we're looking at our first launch probably in May. So I think our prototype, which will be like our first sample, should be here in about a month. We're super excited and we will get photos out to you guys as soon as possible. And then tonight we're actually here with Aura. So she is our guest speaker. She's going to be talking to us about some negotiating techniques. So I'm super excited about this. She works for Stonyfield. Um, she came, comes from an HR background and she lives in New Hampshire. So I will turn it over to Aura. Thank you, Jill. Welcome, everybody. I am super excited to be here. And I'm looking forward to answer all your questions. Please feel free to um, add them in the comment section. Uh, Jill will be helping me here with any of those questions. And as I present or as I start to share some of the experiences, um, feel free to just ask because this is a good time. You know, this is the time for you. It's the time for you. So I'm here to serve you and support you. So just ask the question. So we are here to talk about negotiating salaries. And so first I want to start that there, before you start with negotiating the salary, um, it's important for you to know exactly what is what you are looking to go for. And with that, I mean the job, which is the role that you see yourself doing and the other feedback is what are the qualifications or the skill that that role requires you to do, okay? Because if you have those skills and qualifications, that is great. If you don't have them, that doesn't mean that 
you cannot go for the job. You know, there are entry level jobs. There are jobs that are like midterm. There are jobs that are more senior and advanced. So it's important for each of us to know where we are in that spectrum because that will help us assess one, um, what is the salary we can ask? You know, what is the type of role? What other type of duties that you may like to do, you can add to their role and ask for those tasks that you enjoy doing during the interview or during the selection process. So that is very important. Um, also in regards of that, knowing where you are, if you are entry level or if you are midterm or advanced, um, you will know if what will be the salary. So this is important um, for you to know. And Jill helped me at the beginning before we started this presentation to share some links in there. Each of those links will help with that research that you need to do about the salary. So before applying for any type of job or even in the role you are today, you can go into any of those websites there. You can type the title of the job you have or the title of the role you wish to have in the future. And then in that area, you have the opportunity to type your location. Where are you in USA? Um, and then when you type your location with the town and the state, what that website does is calculates basically everybody within that role. And it will give you an information of what is the range of salaries. The other piece that is important when you guys are in each of those websites is to read the comments of the summary of the job. Why is that important, you may ask. You know, like, yes, the title is important, don't get me wrong, but the summary will have other additional information about is this an entry-level position? So, example, if we have a buyer uh, job, let's say, and that person is starting, um, really is entry level, has no experience of that, that is what we will consider a buyer level one or buyer alone, right? So that feedback will be in the comments, in the summary, it will say uh, zero to two years of experience. So that is considered entry level. So that salary range will apply for that person. If we are talking about somebody that today, let's say has two to three years of experience or maybe four, we want to see, find that information in the description. Mm -hmm. That's what we will consider buyer two or buyer three in those websites that I share with you and that Jill put in the comment session. For a more advanced, um, level role will be maybe buyer five or senior buyer who may be five years of experience specifically in a buying role um, or above. So those sessions are important um, and that is why it's, it's very crucial that for any role you are in, you do that research because that will help you. Okay. Question so far. Yeah, I have two questions. Nobody else put them, but I have two questions. So <clears throat> for people that like in New Hampshire, Vermont, right, a lot of times we'll look for jobs in the Boston area. So when we look up salary, should we do the salary based on that Boston, Massachusetts or where we live? So it's exactly the area where you want to do is where the job is located. So okay. if, um it will calculate if I'm located in Manchester, New Hampshire, right? So if mm -hmm. I check a role, I will type if that role, that location is in Manchester, New Hampshire, I will type that. I will put that title and I will put a town and a stay, Manchester, New Hampshire, or you can put only the stay and it will give you the information. So it's always in the location that the town is located, the job is located, because okay. it calculates based on that. So what can happen with that is two things. One, let's say you run the information with your title, right? Mm -hmm. uh, 
with the years of experience, you find out what it is, and then you find out, let's say, that you are below the rent, right? That can happen. This is where you can go with this research and present it to your employer and or to your manager. Be mindful that there are organizations that, you know, they set up their ranges based on something else. They may not mm -hmm. have the capital or the budget to do salary increases for all the employees, right? But you are doing your due diligence to let them know, hey, I just want to let you know the salary ranges in this area are a, range a little bit higher and mm -hmm. this is an opportunity for you to make your employer aware. There are times yeah. when your employer may not be aware, right? Mm -hmm. um, there are times where, for example, um, your salary may be equal to the range or it may be over. That can be the result of uh, many increases that happen each year. You know, companies do that. So it's important for you to understand the entire story of your employment and how you became to have the salary you have today and also help your employer um, do better decisions in terms of um, that your salary and salaries of others and help them uh, become aware of that. When we are talking about smaller firms, right, um, this is the type of business that our peers of other people are starting. One example is like Jill, she's starting her own business. You know, when we are talking about smaller businesses, they sometimes don't have the capital, you know, to have mm -hmm. all this type of larger salaries for employees. And is the negotiation with a smaller business is definitely different than with a larger entity. One example, let's say we are looking for a job in California, right? And there are two jobs. There is one job, let's say, that is for a production manager and it's a position that is a small uh, manufacturing company that just is starting, privately owned, um, just is starting. And we have a job in California too, different location, but it's a large enterprise. Mm -hmm. The large enterprise may be able to offer Jill if she's looking to relocate, you know, a bonus to a start plus a relocation allowance for her to move herself, her family, etc., to go to California. When we are talking about a smaller business, like the example I just put in regards of that a small manufacturer in California that may have less employees, that manufacturer may not have the capital yet to be able to offer Jill or compete or even consider a relocation uh, bonus for Jill. So it's important for each of us to understand one, what type of business we want to work for, two, what type of job we see ourselves doing, three, do our research in regards of both, the company, the job, the salary, because you can create some awareness, however, even that if we go and tell that a smaller manufacturer, hey, you know, this big manufacturer is offering me this, plus the relocation bonus, even if the smaller manufacturer want to give you all of that, may not be in the position financially to mm -hmm. give you. Okay, question so far. <laughs> no, I think that's really good info. My other question was about something you mentioned earlier um, with like the different ranks or whatever within a job. And if you apply for a job that's like a, maybe a higher level than where you are, let's say it requires three years of experience, but you only have two. So me as someone applying for that job, and I do this often, if I'm close to that threshold, like if it's asking for three years of experience and I have two, I'll say, yes, I have three years because I know on the back end, it'll automatically filter my application out if I don't do that. And I've gotten good jobs by doing that. Like they bring me in for an interview and I've gotten the job. So 
um, from an HR perspective, like maybe you guys don't like that, but it's always worked out for me. I mean, I would say like if it's asking for 15 years of experience and I have one, that's a stretch. But like if it's fairly close, is that okay? So uh, that is a great question, Jill. And um, the best that I can answer your question is if you read the job description, right? You see what it, what it has. People don't need to have all the requirements that show in the job description, okay? And that is where some people get discouraged because they really believe that they need to have all of that list, you know? Um, if a person feels that they have between 75 to 80% of what is in that list, go for it. Go mm -hmm. for the position. Um, if you don't go for it, you know, like, you don't know what's going to happen. The worst case scenario, yeah. they tell you, you know what, we went to other candidates. Um, so that is the feedback in terms of um, the list. As you know, there are many lists that, um, in terms of the job descriptions, that are very long. Um, employers are trying to put everything that they are looking for and the ideal um, person that will have this job. However, if you meet the 75 to the 80% of that list, whatever it is, just go for it. You know, there is mm -hmm. even, we have seen even people that go only with 65%. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not, applying is not going to hurt somebody, um, but I think that if people wait to have 100% of everything, mm -hmm. I really don't think that job exists up there. Uh, yeah. well, no, maybe it will. Yeah. <laughs> maybe if you write it, it will. Um, right. That is one of the things that I think that is important and always at the phone screen, uh, opportunity with your employer or the actual interview, um, they're going to ask you questions, guys. You know, we ask questions, mm -hmm. what is happening, you know, your experience. That is a great opportunity for each of us as employees when we're applying for a new role to provide that feedback and let them know, hey, this is, I feel it out like this. I feel I can do this job. Um, this is the experience that I have. And, you know, you can start the conversation with the employer. So yeah. my recommendation is read it, um, make sure that that's something that you want to do. Obviously, if it's a job you don't want to do, don't apply for it. Yeah. <laughs> even if you have even 100%, you know, if you don't feel that you want to do that, don't waste your time and don't waste the time of the employer who's going to be researching you and, and checking you out to mm -hmm. give you an So that's my feedback in regards yeah. to that. That's what I always operate on, like, they can tell me no, but I'm not going to tell myself no. If it looks inter interesting to me, I'm going to go for it. And then I think from a hiring perspective, because now I'm on the other side of things and I'm hiring people, I hands down would take someone that is a better personality fit and willing to learn new things than someone that you can't work with and might meet every single requirement, right? Like from an HR perspective, I don't know, do you agree with that? I think that, great question. So um, it's important um, for two things, Jill. Um, there are things that you can teach and it depends on the job, right? Um, there are tasks that you can teach. There are others that you can teach, but it will take much more longer, more of your behavioral and things that take longer to develop in a person. And it depends of also what is the need of, you know, like the organization, the entity, um, and see like, can we wait for the candidate? You know, it depends of where we are. Um, I think that the team, team environment, teamwork, you know, the willingness to help others is something mm -hmm. an employee needs to have um, because in today's market, you know, like we are all moving more into a matrix organization where it's a lot of, um, I would say, autonomy and a lot of work in terms of teams, projects, and other things. So that is something that we definitely look for people to have, the team environment and being open to, you know, to development and things of that nature. 
Mm -hmm. Definitely. <laughs> Any other feedback so far? No questions yet. Katie, I agree with your comment. She said, hire for attitude, train for aptitude. Yes. Yep. That's a good one. Excellent. So we have talked so far a couple of things. Um, and feel free to send your questions as any of my feedback or feedback that Jill is giving you. Um, bring anything. Feel free to comment mm -hmm. and let us know um, what questions you have. So we talk a little bit about research you need to do about your role or the future role you're looking for. Uh, we also talk about um, the difference if you are a little bit under or in the range or if you are higher and how is that that can potentially happen that you either under mid range or higher and also that the mindfulness that need to happen about where your employer is in terms of salary and financials, right? Um, I want to move now to the piece in regards of specifically the broader perspective of the salary. Usually when we talk about salary, um, in many occasions people go directly of what they are making per year or per hourly or per week, okay? That is your base pay, okay? Um, that is great that your brain goes there, but we need you to think broad, okay? In terms of entire compensation, okay? when you are looking at a job today, your current role, um, or any role that you're looking in the future, obviously we cannot go backwards. We need you to think about that when you're doing your research of all of this, um, we need you to think of the entire compensation. So that includes the following. What type of benefits the corporation or the employer or the private business is offer you? And in benefits, it's, I'm talking about everything that can be there in terms of medical, visual, dental. How much do they cost you per week? How much do they cost you per year? We are also talking in terms of benefits for um, other type of benefits that some enterprises have, which includes your life insurance in case something would have happened to you. Um, what about STD, you know, short-term disability, if you get injured? What about long-term disability? If you are injured, but it takes you longer to recover. Um, what about your vacation time? What about your sick time? Uh, what about flexibility in your job? All of these things are important to understand. What about bonuses? Does your employer offer merit increases every year? Or no, it's a company that cannot offer you that. What about if it's, for example, they have a performance bonus that based on your performance and based on the performance of your coworkers, you have the potential to get a little bit, I don't know, maybe at the end of the year, maybe July. All of that is something that during the time you are assessing your salary or our salaries, we need to make a notation of that. Benefits are very expensive, guys. I can tell you that. Mm -hmm. um, before, when I started to work, you know, many years ago, I have no clue <laughs> what <laughs> a, an employer actually pay for benefits to be able to offer it to employees. So that is why I'm sharing this with you today. You need to assess that uh, because when other employer, let's say you are looking to leave your current organization or your current employer, when they stand and offer to you, and you need to be asking these type of questions. What are the benefits? What do they cost? What does you as a my employer pay for the benefits? And what is the part that I as an employee pay? And then you obviously need to go home, run some numbers and assess if your entire compensation, I'm not talking about what they are offering you upfront for your year salary or per hour or per week of your, what you're gonna make for the job. I'm talking about everything, your benefits and everything. If that makes sense to you and also to your family and to the type of life that you, style of life, whatever it is that you have, that you have today. 
because if you don't assess it fully, you may potentially go for a job that may be offered you, let's say, more money to start, but then that you're going to have to pay much more for benefits, you know, mm -hmm. or vice versa. And if you make that decision, you want to make sure that it's an informative decision that you already have assessed and that you have known, yes, you know, this is what I want. This makes sense. Go for it. And then there are opportunities in regards of that to negotiate. When I talk about negotiation of your salary, it's not only your offer. Your offer, you know, many people say, I'm going to negotiate my offer no matter what. I will tell you, if your offer is fair, right? If you run your numbers and you think if they are offering you actually like more, well, mm -hmm. if you want to go and negotiate that, that's totally up to you. But if, you know, like there are times where you really don't need to go and like go and ask for more, but you may want to negotiate other things. Example, when it's your startup day, maybe between your previous job and your new job, you may want a week in between. Mm -hmm. As for that, maybe your title, you would like to call it something else. Maybe you want to have, you can ask for other part of a scope in the role. Let's say you are very passionate about doing something. Let's say the role you apply happen to don't have that ask for it. Say, hey, I'm very passionate about that. Do you guys have somebody that do this? This is something that I'm interested in doing. <laughs> what do you think about that? Worst thing that can happen is the manager that's hired you can tell you, you know what, that is under dysfunction. It cannot go to you, but maybe we can involve you in some teams or some projects or something like that. And maybe in the future, but not now. So ask those questions. Um, you also can uh, potentially negotiate um, teams, um, hours, mm -hmm. flexibility on the job. Those things are important. And today, you know, you can ask those questions. You know, nobody's going to like shut you down. But a lot of times people don't ask them because they are uh, afraid that the answer is going to be no. And in mm -hmm. reality, your employer is looking to know what is what you need so your employer can help you be successful at the job and give you the tools that you need um, for that. So ask the questions. Questions so far about that? Anybody? We don't have any questions yet. Um, I was just going to mention, so I don't know if this is director level and above or like what, but I had never heard of this phrase all in. So like when I was negotiating salaries for my first like director level position, they kept saying like, what is the all in salary? And so that term means it's your base salary plus your bonuses plus your stocks. And I almost under negotiated because I actually didn't know what that meant. So when I threw out a number, they thought that that was my all in number. And then we finally figured out like that was, no, that's just the base salary. Then I need you guys to add in the bonus and the stocks on top. So just for people that aren't familiar with the all in term, all in means it's your base salary plus any bonuses that they give plus any stocks that they give. And you can negotiate all of that. Yes. So, yep. Absolutely. And I think that um, those pieces are um, important in terms of knowing what is what they are asking you. And if you don't know, ask the question. Uh, mm -hmm. the, I would say that the best piece of advice I could give you today, yeah. ask the question. If you don't ask, you, you know, you will never will know if the answer was yes, maybe. And all of these things are those are are open to questions. Um, when you are going, like example, like if you're going for a new job, um, it's important to ask those questions. Like, what is the what are they asking you? Like, how many hours a week are you required? Are you gonna be on call? There are positions that require you to be on call. 
um, and companies let you know that on call. When they tell you required to be on call, it's important for you to ask, what does that mean? What is the commitment weekly that I need to have? Is it 24 hours? Is it three hours at night? What, what is it? Because you as an employee need to understand that, okay? Um, other piece is example like if, if the company like, like overtime, that is other question that you want mm -hmm. to ask. And in today, uh, lots of employers actually ask you those questions up front. Are you open to work overtime? You know, we may require you every month to do, I don't know, maybe five hours of overtime. Are you okay to that? I know that if you say yes, um, your employer is counting on you for those five hours. So let's say three months go by, you don't pitch in for the five hours. Your employer can go back and question you and say, Jill, Ora, what's going on? We need you to do overtime. And you know, there are always valid reasons why you cannot do it. But if you say yes, you know, be aware of what you're committing to. If at the offer is something that you really see that you cannot do, I don't know, let's say your employer is asking you to do 12 hours of overtime each week. You mm. cannot commit to that. Say it right there and then I let them know, hey, I really cannot do this. Uh, can we negotiate that? Is I can do six and see what your employer tell you. It may be that where you are today, you may want to actually work more hours because I don't know, whatever reason, let's say you want to do 15. If that is the case, ask the question right there. I'm okay with the 12, but can you guys uh, try to give me three more because I don't know, I'm trying to, you know, put my kids into college. I really need this amount of money now. I'm used to this type of money because I'm, putting it aside and putting a savings account, whatever the case is, ask those questions. The, again, if you don't ask, you will never know, okay? And the answer can be yes, the answer can be maybe, the answer can be no, but it's better to ask the question and know what's gonna be the end result that don't ask it at all, okay? And just because, so I think this <laughs> is something I have assumed is like, if I, oh my gosh, if I ask for more, then that's going to shut this whole deal down and they're just going to be like, get out of here, Jill, like we're done with you. But that's not the case, right? Like typically when you counter, there is some discussion and some back and forth. They don't just close the door on you, right? Yes. And the um, one piece of advice that I will give you guys, and that is basically for all of us, when we ask these questions, do it from a from a side of empathy, okay? And if you understand that the other person across of you, the person that is offer you the employee is actually working with you and working for the company to ensure that, you know, one, they can bring the employee, two, that they can have somebody that can do the job, three, give you something that is fair because we know that to the employee is a number that the employee cannot accept right? If we do an offer that's very low, obviously the employee is not going to accept it because it, the employee already have certain responsibilities, right? At home, we all have bills, etc. So ask the questions from a place of empathy because that is extremely important. So example, if, so if the company or your employer is offer you the salary and you know it's low, some people will go and say, this salary is low, right? Mm -hmm. Don't take it personal. You can ask the questions. Is anything you can do about the salary? By you asking the question that way, instead of telling the salary is low, you know, because now we're thinking, well, he's not, he's not going to accept, probably it's going to run out and it's going to accept other offer. That is giving us the indication that you are still in the game, that you still mm -hmm. want a job and you are asking because you want to see what else can can we do. So you the other person that is um, right there with you will go ask that question for you. So ask the question from a side of empathy. Um, 
don't take it personal. Don't think that the recruiter don't want to give you, you know, more, <laughs> more right? Um, just know that there are certain, you know, ranges. And we, in many occasions as recruiters, we don't know necessarily, one, how much money you're making today. Mm-hmm. And neither can we ask that question. <laughs> Very I was just about to ask that. That's happened to me before. Um, we'll be like negotiating salary and they'll give me a number and I will have already looked on like usually glass stores, what I use to see what the salary range is. So I have an idea of where, and like you said, depending on my skill set, like where do I fall in that range? And so I'll like this happened to me one time I gave them a number and they said, yeah, but um, what's your pay right now? And I said, well, it's here, but like your benefits are so much more, um, you know, expensive. And like, there's all these other factors. And that's how I came out to like this, the salary that I wanted. And they said, oh, okay. But they did ask me what I was making currently. Okay. So usually what we ask is, what is your desired salary with your Mm -hmm. lawyer? Is answer the question different because um, we basically shouldn't be asking you like how much money you know like you're making today um, why you want to make in your for your future employer we may be yeah. asked definitely um, we can ask that question and then from there it um, it will help us and you will see that a lot of times a lot of applications today and a lot of times when they call you or text you that's a question that is asked because by understanding the salary you want to make is easier for the employer or the business to know exactly, okay, can we offer the salary to the employee or not? So, mm-hmm. and there are times where the answer is, well, we may try to do something and maybe meet in the middle. There are times where the employer and the future candidate that can become an employee are so far um, mm-hmm. the range is, is so apart that really is no way um, so that is important to know questions so far anything else <laughs> none in the chat I know I'm like asking all the questions but that's fine if you guys have questions just drop them in the chat I am um, watching it so I can ask them for you excellent uh, uh, the other piece that I think is um, important if you are with, in your current role today, let's say you want to check your salary, you may be at this time um, going to ask for a raise uh, for any type of reason, um, or if you are looking to go with a new employer and you are in the process of offer of everything, um, very important, be timely. And what I mean with that is you can away and let the email or the phone call that somebody is telling you about an offer or a job or anything, sit there for a day, okay? That is not good at all. Um, Be timely. If you are serious, right, you want this race or you want this new job, you need to be engaging. And how we measure engagement is your timely response. Are you there? You know, are you really there ready? Uh, because if, let's say, we are in a negotiation of a salary or anything, and let's say you take, like, four days to reply, that is a huge concern. You know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. do you really want that? Like, what is it? And if you are new into a job, like, say, you you haven't started the job. You are just in that piece of negotiating, and then we're saying, this is what we're going to offer you. Usually, it's timely. Um so don't wait until the last day to accept your offer. Um, also, uh, don't delay the offer because let's say if they give you until, I don't know, they say they extend the offer today to you and they tell you, okay, I will look forward to hear your response by Wednesday. Let's say for any reason you were trying to respond by Wednesday, you forgot, you got busy, you reply on Thursday. At that time, the employer of the business can technically resign the offer because you were not there timely. You know, they give you a timeline. Um, 
and it's important for you to be timely and show your ergonomics that you literally are looking for the job and you are engaged. Also, remember that your goal is to create and start a business relationship with your employer, mm -hmm. right? Um, don't start, you know, like with being argued with your employer or things like that. That's not the way to go, okay? Uh, don't give them ultimatum to the employee, you know, again, don't, don't take it personal. This is just, is business, right? It is, there are pieces that you can negotiate. Um, I definitely don't think that you need to negotiate like everything in an offer. Mm -hmm. Employers out there in many occasions, they, I would say, um, are making offers fairly. Um, you know, we have the, the Department of Labor here that if they are not giving you a fair type of uh, salary, you know, they, they can be prosecuted. So remember that, that um, they may not know exactly what you're looking for. And that is why it's so important for you to express that and let them know what works, what is your desired salary, and what doesn't work for you, um, that way they know. Questions, feedback. I think it's important to like kind of interview the employer too. Mm -hmm. um, I can look back in my career and I kick myself because you know I was really young. I had just gotten out of the military and like I didn't even know what to ask. But you're just as much interviewing the employer as they are you. And like you just said, be open and transparent with what you want so that if it's not a good fit, you guys know then versus starting the job and then figuring out like, oh my God, this is not what I wanted, but you weren't upfront about that. And so you find out, you know, a year into it, like, oh, this is not a good fit. So that would be my other like thing is just make sure you ask them questions too and find out like, What's their average tenure for people? What is the culture there? Ask if you can speak with people that work there about like, hey, how do you like it? What's the culture? What's the pros? What's the cons? Um, those are things I do now that I didn't used to do because I didn't think, I don't know. I didn't think that you were allowed to do that, I guess. <laughs> no. I think it's a different time too, right? Like just before we're, we're so, like I think it's slightly different than today. And the good thing is that today to add to your feedback, uh, Jill, and thank you for bringing that up in this conversation, is that today we definitely, there is so many tools out there. Starting like today, we give you the salary tools, right? You can go, you can do your research. Part of your research, you know, this is, uh, today was about research in terms of salary negotiator if you are, um, in a current role or looking for a new job and waiting for offers, um, it's important for you to do that research and have it ready, right? To the point that Jill was talking about of um, basically interviewing uh, your employer, your future employer, uh, that is extremely important. And it's important for you to research the company and know who they are as a persona. And what I mean with that is what values do they have and if it matches yours. And if you're gonna go in into that company and gonna add value to their culture. Because I know that we believe that we can work in every company, right? That is great that we think that and we, A for positivity. <laughs> but definitely when you align your values uh, the values that you have as a person and as an employee, you're going to find out that there are companies out there that you may not be working for them because their values may be different. And mm -hmm. that is okay. You know, the, the company doesn't have to be exactly like you, but you need to understand that piece and do the research of the company and see if this is a company that you will be happy at. Uh, because overall is, you know, like you don't only need to, if you are engaged with the company and with their mission, you know, like you're going to be mm -hmm. in the role, you know, like you're going to be like more of the stuff that they are doing and what they are about. So definitely um, use the tools that you have in terms in the internet um, to research those companies. And then based on that information, you see in the website, 
prepare questions for, you know, your interview, if you go into and see how they answer um, those questions, um, because that's a very important point. Mm -hmm. The research yeah. have been yeah. for, and we apply for a position. Yeah. And that's such a good tip, too, to write your questions down for the interview. Like, it shows you're prepared. It shows you've done some research on them, and they love that. And, you know, if you're nervous, you don't have to remember all the questions. Like, you can go in there and read it off the notebook and take notes. Like, as a hiring manager myself, I think that it's great when people do that. Like, I don't see an issue with that at all. So, Absolutely. All right, so let me just check real quick. I don't think we have any questions. Yeah, all right. Thank you all for joining, and thank you so much for joining us tonight. This was really fantastic. I enjoyed it a lot. Thank you to all, and if you have more questions, feel free to send them uh, here. This will be available, and then I, will, I can provide feedback to Jill, and then feel free to contact us. Happy to have Perfect. support. Awesome. Thank you so much. Have a good night, everyone. Thank you. Bye.